Welcome back to my YouTube channel, everybody. Today, I want to talk to you about why evidence is not enough to win your case against a narcissist, especially when you're in family court. First of all, a lot of people think that if I have the correct evidence, all I need to do is get my day in court, present my evidence, and obviously the judge is going to side with me because that's the right thing to do, right? And they take for granted a few things. Number one, they assume that the judge is only going to hear your perspective or see your point of view because that's the one that is yours. You ignore what the narcissist has in terms of their evidence or what they are willing to present as evidence. And I'm going to get into that whole topic in just a second. But before I get down the topic of what evidence is good evidence, why is evidence not the most important part of your case? And if it is not, what is the most important part of your case? Just to reiterate once again, you are the most important part of your case. If you are not healed, if you are not able to go into the courtroom and present your evidence, the way you present your evidence, which what the judge will see is you. They will see your attorney. They will see how your attorney interacts with the other attorney. They will see the narcissist. They will see what their uh, their evidence is and how they present themselves. When people who have been through narcissistic abuse do not get whole, just the even thought of looking at the narcissist can send them into a tailspin. It can send them into a place of pure anxiety, depression, right? Feeling very overwhelmed, starting to cry, starting to not be able to hold it together for their hearing. And in fact, there are many research studies that show putting Putting an abused person in the same room as their abuser, even if it's for court purposes, can be more traumatizing than whatever abuse they suffered in the first place. So we have bodies of evidence that have been studied for decades on the effects of going to court already. So my point being, we have empirical studies that show this process is more traumatizing than the events that you have actually gone through with the narcissist. That's why I say if you have not dealt with those events alone and you are prepared to go to court with a narcissist, you are truly setting yourself up for failure because you don't understand how impactful those events are going to uh, going to have on your emotional state and therefore on the way that you present yourself when you are in court. The second most important part of your case still is not your evidence. The second most important part of your case is your attorney. Because if you don't have an attorney who is able to not only present your evidence very clearly in a legal system setting, you are not in a justice system, which is often why people believe I just need to present my evidence and then I will get justice. But that is not the system you're in. You are in a legal system. You need to have a legal reason as to why you are asking for something or why a judge should even hear your argument in the first place. So if your attorney does not understand abuse, it, they do not understand narcissistic abuse specifically, which, by the way, all the attorneys out there are going to tell you, of course, I have experience dealing with a narcissist. That's why asking that a question alone is not enough to to hire an attorney off of you need to know exactly their experience in court remember the attorney is is there to help you but they still will not fight for your case like you will fight for your case this is why you have to be healed enough in order to know when something is going right and when something is going wrong in your case you have to be healed enough to know who you're trusting and who you're putting the rest of your life future into the hands of somebody. You understand that when you go to court with a narcissist, this can really ruin your entire life if you do not have this stuff set up in advance. So number two, your attorney is the second most important part of your case. You notice how your evidence is not the first or the second thing that's the most important part to this case. It's really important that you understand that. Choosing the right attorney will absolutely impact the future of your case. Because if you don't pick somebody who's there to help you, who truly understands the magnitude of what they're going to be dealing with, and again, I have said it before, but I want to say it again, 
the narcissist attorney is going to be another narcissist. They are going to choose somebody who resonates with them. They're going to pick another narcissist. So if your attorney is not equipped in dealing with another attorney who's a narcissist, your case is going to become so overwhelming to them that they stop advocating for you, that they start, in fact, giving you advice that's harmful to your case. If you would take that advice, it would actually set you back and it would take you further away from your goals. So you really need to start to understand the legal system and you need to make sure that you know yourself and you know the person that you're getting into a contract with who's going to present you and represent you to the court. The third and final piece is your evidence. And again, you need to know what constitutes abuse. You need to know what the legal definition is of the different types of abuse that you've sustained. You need to know what best interest is. You need to understand your state's and your county's rules on best interest and what their definition is for best interest if you have children, okay? Best interest of the children, that is a legal definition. I'm not saying that you have the best interest and so the court should side with you. I'm saying there's a legal definition. And again, you are in a legal system. Everything that you advocate for in court needs to be on the basis of a law. There needs to already be an established law. There needs to be precedent. You need to have case studies that back up what you are asking for already. Again, that's the importance of healing yourself so that you can pick the right attorney to represent you. If all of this seems like so overwhelming and you're starting to see where maybe you went wrong when you entered into family court, I don't want you to be uh, frustrated. I don't want you to feel like there's no way that you could get your case back on track because that's just not true. I am offering one-on-one -on -one coaching sessions for the first time in two years since I stopped taking one-on-one -on -one clients. And now I'm prepared to help you get what you want out of court at an even faster rate. I recently got certified in NLP, Neuro Linguistic Programming, and I am super excited to help you heal faster and give you access to my preparing for court with a narcissist training. So you will have access to the technology that I use in order to present your evidence and track the narcissist in terms of legal definitions of abuse. I have an ebook where I explain to you common legal terms that your attorney will be using or that you might hear in court. You need to understand what these mean and you also need to know what your rights are because although you will have an attorney whose job it is to represent you, you still need to know what you're talking about and making sure that all of your rights are being advocated for. If you don't know what those are, there's no way for you to know if your attorney is doing a good job or not because you're not in control of knowing what your rights are. You're not in control of enforcing your rights if you don't know what they are. My one-on-one -on -one coaching for this is 12 weeks and in those 12 weeks, I'm not only going to help you get prepared for everything that you need to know for court, provide you with the technology and the education and the training in order to do that. I will work one-on-one -on -one with you to make sure that you are picking the right attorney, to making sure that you are setting yourself up for success when it comes to presenting your evidence and ultimately getting you what you want out of court. Spaces are limited though, so if you want to take advantage of this, please sign up now. If by the time you're watching this, I've already sold out of the amount of spots that I'm taking one-on-one -on -one clients for, you will get a notification on how to sign up for my waiting list. So get on there so that the next time a spot opens up, you'll be notified. Now, before I end this video, I mentioned when I was talking about the evidence portion, why your evidence isn't number one. It's because you don't understand the lengths a narcissist will go to discredit you, especially in court. So while you are have all of your evidence that you might have been collecting for months or even for years, which is amazing and that's great, if you are not healed and your attorney cannot present that evidence, guess what's gonna happen? The narcissist is going to present their evidence, which may or may not have happened. They will go to great lengths to discredit you. So they will lie under oath. They will present false information. They will twist and turn the information that you have brought as evidence against them. That's why it's so important that you do number two, which is picking the right attorney. A lot of people think, here's the evidence, this is what the judge is going to do, without understanding they're in a legal system. Whereas the narcissist and the narcissist attorney, who, by the way, is a narcissist, 
is going to know the law. They are going to know the different ways that they can twist facts and information in order to use that against you. It's why you have to know your rights before you go into court with a narcissist, especially with a narcissist. And I just want you to understand that if you're not prepared for what the narcissist is going to do, we're going back to what I originally said, which is that this is going to be more traumatizing than the the things that you have previously lived through with the narcissist already. And so that is why I put together my one-on-one -on -one coaching just for clients who are going to court or who want to change the tra trajectory of their court situation right now with a narcissist because you need to know how to become the person that can present those evidences in a legal system not just talking about your experiences and expecting somebody to interpret what is best for you or best for your children best for the outcome of your business and so forth so i really want you to really think about what i'm saying because if you're not taking those steps and taking them in order you can collect all the evidence in the world and it's not going to see the light of day in some cases because it doesn't matter the 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 judge is going to hear other evidence that is going to be more persuasive at the very least i hope that this video has helped you understand where not to put all of your focus yes you need to track your evidence yes you need to collect all of your evidence but you need to make sure that you are working on the number one thing that will make a difference because these things are not equal steps in other words it's not like walking up a staircase like step one work on yourself step two get an attorney these are drastically different if you do not master step one don't even bother going to step two or step three because it's not going to make a difference you can have all of the evidence in the world and still lose to a narcissist in court if you are not representative of what you're asking for so i really want you to get a hold of what i'm trying to say ultimately it's that you are in control of your destiny way more than you think you are and i look forward to helping you have full victory in court with a narcissist